All right, so now for the fun part. I found that the best way to learn Rails is actually by building Rails applications. As we go through, I'll stop and explain what is happening and the various concepts that you're using. With that said, we are going to now start building our very first Rails application. So open up your terminal and let's create a directory or folder uh, for our application to live in. I'm going to call my directory projects and place it inside of the documents folder, uh, but you can call it and place it wherever you'd like. Uh, so from the root directory, I'm going to uh, CD into uh, my documents folder. Uh, CD stands for change directory. And I'm going to do a command called make directory uh, mkdir, and I'm going to call this projects. Then I'm going to cd into that new projects folder. And now that we are in our projects folder, uh, let's go ahead and create our new application. Throughout the rest of the book, we're going to be building a Rails blog from scratch. So to begin, let's create a Rails application by running the Rails new and the name of our app. I'm just going to call this blog. So what just happened there? Well, the Rails new command created all the files that um, are needed for our application. Then it ran bundle install. If we scroll back up, uh, you can see it says run bundle install. And that command uh, goes out and downloads and installs all the gem that gems that Rails depends on. So next we need to CD into our newly created Rails application. So let's do CD blog and hit enter. So we can take a look at our new app in the browser. Let's uh, run a command called the Rails server. So I'm gonna do Rails server and hit enter. The Rails server command starts the WebBrick server that comes with Rails. It allows you to work and develop locally. So now open up your browser of choice. My personal favorite is uh, Google Chrome. So I'm going to open that up and I'm going to go to localhost port 3000. So welcome aboard. You are now writing Ruby on Rails. Give yourself a pat on the back because you have just created your first Rails application. However, at this point, it doesn't do very much. So before we start adding additional functionality to our application, I want to briefly cover the structure of the Rails application. Go through each of its directories and subdirectories and explain uh, where everything lives. So go back to your terminal and hit Command T. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up a new tab uh, in the terminal. So what we need to do is CD into the Documents folder, um, into the Projects folder, and inside of the Blog application. So now that we're in the blog, you can do the open command. So let's do open and then period. And that will open it up inside of uh, your finder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop this over Sublime Text, which I am using for my text editor. So in the sidebar, you can see we have a number of different uh, directories and subdirectories within there. So I want to briefly go through and cover where everything lives. So first off, inside of the app directory, if we open this up, you can see this holds the uh, subdirectories for the MVC conventions, the models, the views, and the controllers, as well as assets, helpers, and mailers. Uh, the assets directory is where you're going to store your images, uh, your JavaScript, and your style sheets. So if we close that and we go to the bin directory, so the bin directory contains app executables, which are uh, Ruby scripts for using things like the bundle command, the Rails command, and the rate command. Next, the config directory contains all of the configuration code that your application needs for the tiny amount of configuration that you may need to do. Uh, remember, Rails uses convention over configuration. 
For example, the environment subdirectory which contains the configuration files for the three environments created by Rails, the development, test, and production. The database.yaml file uh, is where you'll configure the database uh, you'll use for each environment. Rails uses the SQLite database uh, by default in development, but you'll probably want to use a different database such as the Postgres or MySQL database in production. Another important file that we will be using is the uh, routes.rb file. The routes file handles the mapping of incoming web requests to your application. Uh, this is where you'll add new routes for your application based on the features we are building. We'll cover this in uh, more detail in future chapters. The database directory, uh, this contains a few files and a subdirectory called migrations. As you build your application, uh, you create database migrations, which is how you can create and modify tables in the database. This directory also contains a file called schema.rb, which is a snapshot of your app's database. You want to make sure that you never update the schema.rb file directly and only modify it through the use of migrations. Um, the schema file is not here right now along with the migrations because we have yet to run any migrations uh, for this application. And then finally there is the seed.rb file which is how you can set up your application with preloaded data. The lib directory is for reusable code libraries. It comes with two directories, assets and tasks. Um, unless you have some custom stuff, for example a custom rake task, um, I'm not sure it makes sense for uh, most of your stuff to live here. The log directory contains your application log files, which is good for debugging. When working in development environment, you'll see the development.log. There will be a different one for your different environments, such as test and production. The public directory, this directory contains things like the 404.html, uh, and the 500.html. This is because the directory will still work if your application crashes. So this is where you'll want to put your uh, error pages. The test directory is for if you write tests for your application to make sure it runs the way it should. For example, test-driven development is the idea of writing a test first and then writing the code to make the test pass. Uh, so for any test that you write, uh, would they would live in this directory. The temp directory is to hold temporary files, for example, cache, PID, or session files uh, for intermediate processing. The vendor directory, this directory contains the assets needed by third-party gems for your application. You probably won't use this directory much as many of the gems you are using are managed by bundle. Uh, the bundle command is used to install and update gems by your application. Uh, two other important files are the gem file and the gem file.lock. Uh, these files allow you to say which dependencies are needed in your application. Uh, these files are used by the bundler gem, which again is used to install and update gems. The rake file, uh, this file is used to locate and load tasks that can be run from the command line. And finally, the readme, this file is used to tell other developers what your application does, how it works. You can think of this file as an instruction manual for your application. All right, so in the next video, we're going to go through and set up the MVC setup for our application.